Hello, welcome back. In our last video, we have provisioned a web tier with all those software that we need, which includes Linux Ubuntu 12.4, Apache Web Server 2.0, PHP 5.5, and Oracle Call Interface 8. All right. And now in this video, we'll look how we are going to provision DB tier. So essentially, you have two options. In option number one, that you can do is that you can you can you can provision an EC2 instance yourself and on that you are going to have an AMI that is of 12.4 Ubuntu server and then on top of that you are going to download Oracle 11.2 from Oracle website and then you download all those dependency libraries that Oracle 11.2 requires so that you can install Oracle 11.2 here so in this option that a lot of work however the other option that we have is that we can really use Amazon Relational Database Services popularly known as RDS. So in this case in the view button click we can set up a database which is Oracle 11.2 with appropriate tuning and optimization. So essentially it's a RDS abstracts a lot of other things that which you have to do in option one. Okay so it depends what you choose. But in this demonstration and in this course, I'm going to use Amazon RDS because it is easy. And again, my goal here is to teach you how to do load testing. So let's go to the to the Amazon Web Services uh, website. And right now, I'm just going to click on RDS. And here is going to DB instance. I'm going to launch a DB instance. So it will ask me which engine that I need to choose. I need to choose Oracle SE. So let's select it. And then if I want to if you want to plan this thing for production uses. So what is the production uses? So this is something like this. So let's say this is a database that you are it's a production database. So what happens if for whatever reason if this database is crashed then or let's say for example this this is in the building say so let's say building A which the building is completely destroyed for some natural calamities. So in that case, all your customer data are also gone. Actually, this is what is in the production case. What people do, people always do in parallel to this production database, they have a standby database. So say this is the production database and this is the standby database. So what happens is that application is connecting to this production database and then there is a stream between the production and standby so that whenever there's some changes happening then those changes are also communicated to the standby so that means if this thing is gone then just application is going to do a transparent failover to this machine okay and this link whatever this thing is gone now okay and then still the application is going to run and system is going to work so this is what does it mean that in one location so this is location a will have one database in another location that is going to be location b in amazon aws they call that one ag or availability zone all right so in our case since this is not a production just test and, and, and for a training case we really do not plan to production purpose if you plan for production purpose then amazon will set up Two, two databases for you. One is production, another is standby. Alright, and then so say no. And next step, and here it will ask the license model. I will select that license included. So that means I am paying the license cost, imagine. And then try to install which version of DB engine. So always install the, the latest version. Then go for a what is the database instance class you know you need a micro instance small instance medium so micro means only 750 mb ram so what i'm going to do i'm going to go to relatively large instance so db m1 large instance all right then it will ask me about multi ag deployment so multi availability deployment as i told you i'm not really interested in that i'm just going to do no and minor version upgrade i say no I allocate let's say 20 GB to start with then this is called IOPS so IOPS means uh, like you now what is the 
the I/O uh, outputs. Okay, so I just go with the default I/O output. It will ask me what is the instance identifier. Let's say give the name as ORCL. Then username give Moodle, and my password is welcome one. Okay, and the next step just make sure that availability zone is the same zone our middle tier is. So why I'm telling you Amazon has their data center all around all around the world and let's say in US they have a East Coast data center and they have a West Coast data center and in East Coast data center they have one availability zone let's say this is called 1A so that means all those computers and storage and whatever they're all connected in the same network in East Coast 1B they are you know basically they're also connected in another network so that means in our case we are going to there will be a lot of traffic between the web tier and db tier so therefore it does not make any sense to have your web tier in one zone and your database tier in another zone so in that case you have to do an extra hop to network so and so and that is again going to have a performance impact so what is it's always recommend to have both the web tier and db tier in the same zone and to know that what is the zone that I need to select here okay I do not know like you know which zone that I need to select here availability zone 1 1a 1c 1d so far let me see what is my availability zone for my Amazon uh, EC2 instance so the availability zone for Amazon EC2 instance is US East 1c so therefore my RDC should be US East 1c okay then always ensure that your character set name should be AL32 UTF-8 anything else you choose is going to give an error while installing the application okay so next thing is the parameter group the parameter group is if you want to change anything about the Oracle database parameter then you can create your parameter group and change it but just go by default that is what the best the next thing is that security group so what does security group means so as I told you before we open this port 22 and port 80 to outside similarly Oracle database listens on port 1521 which can be configurable alright so therefore what I want to say I want to ensure that anybody can connect to this port 1521 at least this machine this web machine can this web tier can connect to this 1521 so basically that is what it says that what is the security group let's say I just give the security group as default so let's see what is going on so next step and it will it will ask me to enable automatic backup I say no then next step and then almost everything is ready now launch DB instance so close and now let me look at the security group because that's what I think the default so click on default okay so what I have done here is that I had given the CIDRRP this means that I have attached that 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0.0 that means anyone can connect to this machine okay so if you have you do not have this thing ensure that you put this thing and add so that anybody can connect to your instance to the 1521 port okay so that is what I have done here so still the database is creating so it takes some time so let's wait for that okay so looks like right now the database is available and so let's check what are the things so it is shows you the endpoint is this big string okay so I will tell you what is, what is the significance of this thing so when you connect to a Oracle database you need to know what is the IP address what is the, or what is the host name of the database server and then you need to know what is the port number on which the listener is listening it is this is giving you watch 1521 then the username is Moodle and then we have given a password with this we have set up our database server 
with 11.2.0.2 of Oracle Enterprise Server. So with this are all ready right now so that we can install the packaged module application. So if you look at so if you look at your environment, so this is done, this is done, and now let's in the next video we are going to install module 